All right, here we go. Day two of 360 day uploads. Excuse me. All right, so let's get into it. My, my, my real soccer talking point today is just going to be about my enjoyment of Serie A. Um, really Inter, I love Inter. You know, I'm, there's American players at Juventus and, and AC Milan, and I, I enjoy keeping up with them and, and watching them if I can. But really just my, my love for Inter Milan and not so much the club, but just the coach Simone Inzaghi. I absolutely love Simone Inzaghi. Um, I fell in love with Simone Inzaghi. Uh, and I'm a little bit of a bandwagon, but it was when they played against Liverpool in the round of 16. I think that was two, not it was two Champions Leagues ago. And I just remember that they were playing at Anfield, and they were wearing these black kits, and they had you know orange and yellow on them, and they were just vibrant kits, and it was beautiful against the Liverpool of red, the the red of Liverpool, and. You know, Simone and Zaghi, they, they're, they're playing this like majestic style of football where players are all over the pitch and it's just so free-flowing but so pre-rehearsed at the same time. It's just controlled chaos. And I was absolutely obsessed with it when I watched. And, you know, they lost. But I did. A, I made a video about it. And, you know, football, is, it is about results in, in that world. But, you know, it's also it's, it's enjoyment and um uh, that was th probably one of my favorite, probably my favorite tie I've ever watched. You know, I was just so engaged with how they did stuff, and it's hard for me to to know how you can take a group of men or women and say words and get them to understand how you want them to play and execute it so perfectly. You know. Uh, and this is, I guess this would be about my 40th month as I really, really get into coaching. And that's just something I struggle with. You know, I always ask uh, coaches that I've been around, you know, I'm searching for this, this uh, golden, golden ticket. I'm searching for this golden ticket where, you know, you put the session on, in on, on practice and you talk to the players and then they go out and perform what you're asking them to do. And and what I've thought and, and what I've collected from all these answers is that there's not a golden ticket. It's your understanding of the game. It's your delivery of what you want to say. It's your cohes cohes cohesiveness with the group and getting them to buy in. And one of the best pieces of advice I've ever received is you know, you can tell them this, you can tell them that, but if they don't want to go out there and play for you, then you, what are you doing? Um, and that's something that I just absolutely adore about Simone and Sagi. Now, I had another conversation with someone else. We talked about the Man City versus Inter Champions League final game. And I mentioned, I said, you know, I think that Simone and Sagi coached a winning game. And the person I was talking to said, yeah, well, maybe, but did he win? No. And, you know, I think as a coach, you can coach a winning game and still lose. I think you can put players in the correct positions and you can give them so much detail and and, and explain how, how stuff will transpire. And it's ultimately it's up to them whether they retain it or whether they can perform the action that is asked of them. And I think that I truly believe in my heart that Simone and can coach a winning game against Man City. And Ederson, Ederson kept him out of it. You know, Ederson, that was one of the best goalkeeping displays I've seen as well. So, you know, it was, my obsession's caught up with there, caught up with him. Uh, I also enjoy, like, I also enjoy watching the Americans in, in Serie A. You know, I enjoy watching Christian Pulisic and Eunice. I enjoy watching Tim Weah. I enjoy watching Weston McKinney, who went through hell last year when he, at his time at Leeds. You know, he, he would say to himself he wasn't fit and he didn't play his best. <clears throat> and that's tough as a footballer, you know. This is your livelihood. This is how you make income for your family. This is your reputation. You only get one reputation. Your first impression, you only get one first impression. And if you blow that, then you have to work extra hard. 
So I'm just so happy for Weston. You know, he's been absolutely outstanding this year. Arguably a top 10 player in the Serie A. So that's just my little rant about Serie A football. I absolutely love Simone and Zaghi. All right, so my second part is about uh, obsession versus passion. And I just watched Whiplash. What a great film. If you haven't watched it, I recommend watching it. I honestly put it off for about three years because I was like, eh, I don't really care about music that much. You know, I like tempo and rhythm and tempo and rhythm. See, I do enjoy music, I guess. But, you know, I think I've found my passion with what I want to do with my life. And, you know, um, It's something that like burns a desire in me, and I I get I enjoy doing it. I I never dread what I have to do. Um, you know, I'll go home. I'll come up with sessions every now and then. Um, but I want to feel this obsession. Like, I want to be drove mad by the idea of becoming great in whatever in this field of coaching that I'm trying to achieve, and you know. You can make the excuses that, well, I'm not surrounded by people that match my my passion or match the obsession I have with whatever it is you may be trying to achieve. But then I think to myself, you know, well, did, what if, you know, Michael Jordan was like, nah, I don't really feel like training today. I'm just going to go hang out with my buddies or LeBron James. I'm just going to go hang out with my friends and and, you know, obviously they're God gifted talent, but there's hard work that goes into that, that that people don't see. They just see the the product that's put out on the court, or you know, with Ronaldo or with Messi. You know, they just wanted to hang out with their friends and, and do stuff that teenagers did. Then they wouldn't be to where they're at right now. And that's something that I'm struggling with is that self discipline. Is you know, I want to be I want to be a great coach more than anything. But I haven't felt the obsession to put the work in to get to be that great coach. You know, I'm I'm, I'm on the track of becoming an all right coach and establishing a decent name for where I'm where I'm at located right now. And, you know, that's fine for some people, but that's not what I want to be. And I guess the more I talk about it, the more that I'm seeing it. This is why I love talking to this. It's therapeutic for me, like I said in the last episode. But it's. I want to find that obsession like I want to be so obsessed with something where it's just all I think about all the time and what I would do in these certain situations and how I would handle that situation and that's what I do but not to the extent of being obsessed my last bit of peace we have three today is something I, I the there's two things I struggle with as a coach and it's confrontation with like with parents you know you have to deal with with parents and youth sports a lot and I would like to, you know, be able to make my decisions and that'd be final. But that's not how it is. You have to deal with it. It's like the holistic. It's everything. And I completely understand that. And I'm, I think I do all right. But it's the way you coach kids. And I'm personally more of, I show so much affirmation and so much love and tell them they're doing an amazing job, even though they're not. And I'm trying to find, I don't know what the balance is to be a realist because I don't think I'm getting the best out of the, the kids that I coach because I'm almost maybe being too nice. And it's hard for me because I don't want to be such a prick where they don't want to play soccer. But it's like, all right, well, you know, you can't coach everyone the same, and I get that. But how, what's the line? That's what I'm maybe trying to say. You know, what's the line? You know, I wish I had the golden ticket. I'm always chasing the golden ticket. I had this imaginary rainbow. I'm always chasing. I'm just chasing. Um, Matthew McConaughey said, you know, I want to, who's your hero? Well, it's me in 10 years. Obviously, you're not going to catch yourself, but, you know, you're just chasing and trying to become better and better every single day. But how can you blend enjoyment and <clears throat> enjoyment and, and creating boundaries where they can't cross and if they do cross it, there will be consequences. But are the consequences enough to keep them roped in rather than making them turn and say, well, I don't want to play this sport anymore. There's 17 different sports and other opportunities for me to go out there. 
So I guess that's kind of just where I'm at right now. Um, I appreciate you guys listening. This was day two of 360 day challenge. Road to 100 subs. Uh, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. I will see you guys tomorrow.